Hi folks, in this video, um, oh, and Mr. Long here. In this video, we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions, and we're also going to look at how to uh, create vectors with ordered triples, okay, vector representations. So um, let's begin with looking at Pythagorean theorem, first of all, in two dimensions. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to get the distance from O to C. Okay, the distance from O to C. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade in a triangle that goes between O and C. Oh, whoops. It's got to go there, everywhere inside that blue. Okay, inside that blue. So can you imagine where that triangle is located? In what plane is that triangle located? Okay, it's all along the bottom of that um, that that cubic shape, okay, that uh, rectangular prism. So if I look at it, where's the right angle? Well, it's the blue. I'm we're looking at the blue one in this case, the blue triangle. So the right angle is down here, right? This is going to be your hypotenuse. So imagine that you're looking down through this right here. That's one of the key things, right? Is how do I look at this? So I go from above and I look at it this way. Okay, if I do that, I'm going to see a nice triangle like so. Okay, so, and what I've done is I've drawn it up here, and that's what you want to be able to do. Um, so, O is the origin right there. C is this location here, right? And we know that this is, this distance here, which is 4 going along here, is delta x, right? That's change in x. And then this distance here to here from D to C, right? That's going to be delta z. That's how much is coming in and out of the page. And the distance we want to get by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse, is OC. Okay, so I know that O to D squared plus D to C, so O to D squared plus D to C squared is going to equal OC squared. What we want to do, though, is get everything in terms of delta x and delta z. So that means that delta x, so OD, we can clearly see is delta x, right? So that's delta x. So delta x squared plus delta z squared, this distance here in and out of the page, change in z, equals oc squared. We're going to leave that for now. Now we want to think about, well, how am I going to get the length from o to h, from this corner to the opposite corner up above, right, diagonal corner. So now my triangle's a little bit different. So here's the, it's in the black, it's shaded in black, or it's, it's drawn in black. Now I want you to think, think of all these um, as windows almost, right? So which window would you look through? The top, the back, the front, to be able to see that. Well, I'm pretty sure if you wanted to see it properly, you would look through this window, right? That's the window there you'd be looking through. Imagine what it looks like. So if we look at it, which side is the hypotenuse, right? So this is O, this is C, it goes all the way up here to H. Okay, and we want to get this distance from here to here. So if I'm looking through this right here as a window, which is what I want to think of, it's going to look like this, right? OC is going to go along the bottom, along that plane at the bottom. Then from C to H, which is this distance here, that's actually going to be delta Y, right? And then we want to figure out O to H. Okay, that's our goal, that hypotenuse. So let's look at this. Now I've written it a little bit differently here. Um, so I've said O to H squared is going to equal O to C squared, which makes sense, right? Plus this H to C, which is delta Y squared. But, 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 let's now look at this. What is O to C squared worth? O to C squared is nothing more than delta x squared plus delta z squared. O to h squared equals O to c squared and O to c squared is delta x squared plus then it's delta z squared, right? Because O to c is O to c squared is delta x plus delta z squared plus then we've also got delta y squared. So what I did down here is I just changed the order and wrote it as delta x squared, delta y squared, delta z squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Okay, squared 
x squared, y squared, z squared. And believe it or not, it extends to four dimensions, five dimensions. That's uh, the whole field of analytics uses those sorts of things. Um, it's, I know it's hard to visualize, but it's not. Once you get into four dimensions, it's not about um, physical distance anymore. It's uh, you're comparing uh, metrics. They're called metrics, one metric to another. So distance represents how far things are apart. So if you have had a set of four types of one object, and then in, uh, are comparing it to another four objects, right, um, that were all measured with the same units and things, you could use the fourth dimension of uh, the Pythagorean theorem to compare how different something is, right? That's what you do with distance. It's how different are things, how far apart are they. Anyway, it's a whole interesting field of analytics. Uh, okay, so that's the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So if I actually wanted to get the distance for O to H, so what is O to H, right? What is O to H? I'll, um, we'll figure out O to H. So O to H squared is going to equal delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared. Well, what's delta x? Delta x is, it goes from here to there, right? That's the x-axis, so that's 4 squared. Plus, uh, then I need to do delta y. How much is y changing by? Well, y changes from c to h. That changes by 2, plus 2 squared. Plus, and then how much does z change by? Well, I start at the origin, and then I have to come out 2 units to get to A, which is the same distance as H along the z-axis. So plus another 2 squared. Okay, so 4 squared is 16, 2 squared is 4, and 4. So 4 squared 16 plus 4 is 20, another one is 24. Okay, so OH squared is 24, or OH equals root 24. Okay, root 24. So that gives you an idea of the Pythagorean theorem in 3D. Right, so Pythagorean theorem in 3D is just, again, delta x squared, delta y squared, plus delta z squared. Let's look at vectors. Okay, let's look at vectors. So, um, again, vectors are delta x, delta y, delta, in this case, delta z. So, what are we going to do here? Well, I need to get these vectors. So, the first vector I'm going to get is e to k. Okay, e to k. So, what I want to do is just draw a vector from e to k, so I'm going to put an arrow there because that's where it ends. Starts at e, ends at k, and I should have vector symbols on these. Um, so e to k. So if I look at it, what does x change by? So there's delta x right there. It appears to me going from e to k that x changes by negative 2, right? That's delta x. What does y change by? Well, it starts on the floor, if you will, and it goes up by 2. So that's positive 2. What does z change by? Mm, what's the value of z here? Zero. What's the value of z up there? Zero. So it doesn't change at all, which makes sense because that vector is contained within the xy plane. Okay, vectors can be contained within planes. So that's contained within the xy plane, so z has to be zero. Okay, we're going to do a vector now from the midpoint of ij to a the midpoint of ij to a. So ij, the midpoint of ij is right here, right? That's the midpoint of i to j, and then we're going to come all the way down here to a. Okay, so it starts here, that's the tail. This here is the tip, right? And we're now going to figure out what delta x, delta y, and delta z are. So what is delta x in this case? Well, delta x is going to be from this location all the way back to here, right? Because it's the distance x. Delta x is the distance to the y, z plane. Okay, that's delta x. So it comes back to here, and that's 3 units. Oh, is it positive 3 or negative 3? It's negative 3, right? Because we're going towards the origin. All right, so that's delta x. What's delta y? Delta y is up and down. Well, here I'm starting two units. The value of y is two units here. The value of y here is zero. That's negative two. Finally, what about z? Okay, what about z? z the z value here is zero. The z value here is two. We went from z equals zero to z equals two. That's positive two. Okay, positive two. Now we're going to do the midpoint of ij 
to A, the midpoint of IJ to A. So, uh, midpoint of, oh, sorry, we don't, we're not going to worry about that one. Sorry, that's a repeat. We don't need to do that again. Okay, folks, so those are a couple opportunities for you to do vectors. Um, we're going to pause this one now, and the, in the last one, uh, we're going to start doing a little bit more complicated things like unit vectors.